This is Pixelated Audio Music Disc Volume 3, featuring GC Clusters Music Disc Volume 7, Wado Agaki no Mizumashi Tokushu. And welcome back to the bi-weekly video game music and retro gaming podcast, Pixelated Audio. I'm James, and this is Brian. What's up? Today, we are diving into our third volume of our music disc series, and uh, we're talking about a disc called GC Clusters Music Disc Volume 7, Waru Agaki no Mizu Mashi Tokushu, Last Minute Effort Inflated Edition. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since we did a music disc. I think it's been probably about 10 episodes or so. Yeah, maybe even more. I know yeah. our first music disc volume came out, uh, I believe, January 1st, 2017. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure even if we've done one recently, we're probably still overdue <laughs> for another one. Yeah, you know, these are fun for us to do. Uh, we kind of decided we were going to do them in the beginning of the year, and we thought we'd maybe do four or five a mm-hmm. year or something like that. So we're a little bit behind schedule, I guess. But, you know, these episodes are a little bit less research intensive. And yeah. so we kind of do them when we have when we're more constrained on time. It's been kind of a rough last five, six months. Yeah, for there's, us. there's been a lot going on in our personal lives and stuff like that. So it, it, it can become difficult uh, with like work and families and, and, and stuff like that. Trying to, to balance everything. Yeah, yeah, to find a lot of time uh, to do the really labor intensive episodes like the RPGs and like the series, uh, you know, where it's like more than one game in uh, an episode. But uh, these are always super fun um, that are much more music intensive kind of like our uh, expansion pack episodes except for uh, there's a lot of really o- awesome original music that you can't hear anywhere else yeah and i'm excited because we have a lot of stuff to kind of showcase today that is definitely on the obscure side and you might not have heard it and i'm going to take a guess and say most people probably haven't heard uh but i think that uh once you hear it you're gonna fall in love with some of these tracks uh, like that first one we came in with, it was called Mayim Mayim Euro Arrange. And it's it's kind of like a spin on an old Israeli folk mm-hmm. dance. You know, the Mayim Mayim. I, I guess that means like water, water in Hebrew. Sure. And so it's like, I, I actually looked up videos. It's kind of got this little dance and everything. Uh-huh. And uh, so this was a Euro arranged version of that. And uh, it doesn't sound identical at all. But it's, uh, I, I thought it was pretty fun. Now, um, now that you mention it, it, there was something about this track that felt very familiar. Like I yeah. heard it somewhere or yeah, this yeah, yeah. was based on something. Um, I didn't pick up on that uh, ahead of time, but I, I did think that uh, it had this feeling to it that I recognized from somewhere. But uh, it was just really fun. Lots of really cool stereo panning. Uh, there was a lot of variety. I liked when there was the really minimal parts that kind of sounded like the like, cowbell, like the thunk, thunk, Yeah, thunk, and thunk, like thunk, in thunk, that area, there was like a, uh, 
just like the beat that was going on just kind of reminded me of those like Casio keyboards that had all the, the programmable <laughs> beats and then you could like do stuff on top of it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, when it came into full swing, I really, really enjoyed uh, this track a lot. Yeah, the reason why we wanted to start with this track is because it's also the menu music. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't intended to be, but Geppel, the uh, the main guy, we'll talk about him in a second, uh, he was like, uh, sorry, Senor M, I, I'm stealing this and using it for the menu and that's what ended up happening. But it's really cool. It's a great way to um, get you into, you know, you pop this disc in and uh, your intention for buying this originally was to listen to music and right. you're greeted with this song that's really you know, dancey and kind of happy and mm -hmm. kind of kind of silly at the same time. I think it's a great selection for that. Yeah, and it starts out really quickly too. Like it has that little that little stereo pan section right there in the beginning, and then it just bursts right into the song, which I think is really cool because it kind of like you pop in the disc. It kind of it's getting going. You're not maybe not ready for the song yet, and then uh, it, you know first couple seconds, and then just explodes into this really cool you know very Euro type song. Yeah. It's really neat. Yeah. So this track was actually composed by Senor M, and uh, he was one of the members of this group. So let's kind of talk about the disc real quick before we talk about GC Clusters. This was their seventh volume to come out, and it's a two disc set, one program disc that handles like the menu and has um, you know different data on it, has the information, uh, pretty much everything, PMD, all that good stuff. And then it has another disc that contains the PCM samples. So it's a two disc set, contains 35 tracks. Now 13 of those are original tunes and the remaining are all covers of right. existing songs. Some songs that you may know, they're very familiar. We're gonna hear a few of those today. And then uh, some of those are a little more on the obscure side, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's always great too, because you will you get to hear some of the songs that you know. I think in a past one, we had like some Castlevania and stuff like that. And it's like, oh my God, this sounds amazing on the PC-88. And then uh, you get to hear some stuff that you've never heard of and uh, it isn't a cover of anything. So they get to really explore how crazy the system can be. Right. And there's a lot of influence from other games and stuff as well. So I think it's, it's very fitting to be on a video game music show because that was kind of the intention. A lot right. of these guys wanted to become, just like Kaja, wanted to become a video game musician. And uh, this was kind of like their, basically their resume. Right. Right. So uh, we're going to be listening to a lot of stuff that's uh, going to be fun and new and uh, kind of talk more about GC Clusters. So this group, they released seven discs in total, um, all released in 1991. However, because of some I guess internal conflicts and naming stuff. They didn't. They weren't really a fan of the name. I don't know mm -hmm. why they chose it to begin with. But it's GC clusters with a Z. How, it can't get much cooler than that. <laughs> Everything, yeah, with a Z. Um, but yeah, so because of this uh, this naming conflict that they had, the group dissolved around 1992, just a year later, which is why we didn't see anything else from them at this time, uh, at least under this group name. Yeah, there was actually a successor group that formed shortly after GC clusters disband called Oyama no Taisho, which had basically the same members, but that also dried up a few months after producing several more discs. Right. Um, Oyama no Taisho, that's not a good meaning in Japanese. It's kind of like, I, it's 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 hard to translate, but it's kind of like, um, like we're the shit, you're not kind of thing. Oh. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, it's definitely a sarcastic kind of thing. They're, they're uh -huh. not trying to be like, you know, flaunting like how amazing they are, but it's, it's just a funny, not good meaning name. I, I I don't know why they thought that was better, but you know, whatever. Yeah. It's kind of rad. Uh, GC Clusters. Um, what's what's cool about them is they actually reunited uh, under GC Clusters that name in 2000 to produce GC Clusters Memorial Works 1 through 4, I believe all on CD. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, it's only, what, 10 years later or nine years later, but they, they got together because these were pretty popular discs. Mm -hmm. And so being able to kind of put them all into a compilation album is... It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, even though they were only together as uh, as GC Clusters for a year and as the other group for you know several months, uh, they produce a lot of music. I mean, this disc alone has thirty five tracks. So yeah, I mean that, and they put out seven discs in that one year as GC Clusters. So I mean, they had a ton of music to to work from. So despite the ability to kind of settle on names and, and, <laughs> and squash disputes right. like that, they put together a lot of music all as as one 
you know cohesive group so that's pretty cool yeah now there were uh there was a, a large number of members there was like five or six mm-hmm. guys yeah there was anima who was a composer and the programmer for the machine code subroutines uh, which we found out in the notes in the on the disc which mm-hmm. is pretty cool there was also pintaro senior m Kobuhei and Tetsuya Otani, who all did composition, arrangements, and the music programming. Right. So all that PMD, you know, MML stuff, they're all, they're all, I mean, these are young guys Mm -hmm. and they're all figuring it out. And, you know, documentation is kind of like kind of wishy-washy. So pretty, pretty awesome. Um, And most importantly in the group, there was Geppel, also pronounced Geppelun or GPLN. In the last music disc installment, we talked about Kemmel, you -hmm. know, and how he was kind of like the head honcho for Firecracker and, uh, you know, that doujin group. For GC Clusters, it was Geppel. He was the leader of the group and he also was the main programmer and did, you know, a good portion of the compositions as well. He started in the doujin scene in 1990 by creating the group. And said that he was kind of fortunate because that's about the time that the Dojin kind of community was thriving. It was getting popular. And he got really famous for his stuff like real quick because there just wasn't a ton of like content out there yet. And so he fell into it the perfect time, I Mm -hmm. think. And that's, you know, for his benefit. So uh, he's still actively doing stuff like compositions and arrangements on the side today and even has a personal site, which is newscraft.com, where he posts, uh, you know, various news about Dojin activity and C releases and stuff that he's working on. Yeah, that's really awesome. And like you touched on, he produces some CDs for both composed and arranged music and has contributed to over 40 albums, which is quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, it's, I mean, over you know the course of twenty six years or something like that, it's a lot because you know two thousand seventeen and the guy's still you know tapping away at, at writing tunes. It's it's awesome, awesome yeah, to see. Yeah, and most recently he worked on an album titled Love Chip Tune uh, with even some Pokemon Go arrangements and stuff like that, <laughs> and even post stuff on SoundCloud and a lot of that being OPNA stuff as well. Yeah, was there music in Pokemon Go? I don't know. I never played Pokemon Go. I think I like tried it once, and uh, I don't know. I'm just yeah. I'm sure there was something in there. There's, there's, but, uh, there's some kind of music in there. Pokemon Go range. And now I got to listen to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll post links to his website and stuff uh, on the on the show notes mm-hmm. for this. Let's get into a cover track. So we're going to kind of go original track. The first one we heard was original. Right. And we'll listen to a cover track and then we'll go back to original and kind of flip flop. Uh, so the next track, what do we got, James? Yeah. So next up, we have a cover of Air Battle from Thundercross 2 on the arcade arranged by Geppel. All right, that was Air Battle from Thundercross 2 in the arcade, composed by Mikio Saito, arranged by Geppel for GC Clusters Music Disc Volume 7. And uh, 
I, I just thought this was a ton of fun. Yeah, I, I think this track was was very fun, very fast paced and, and exciting. Uh, I love the pulse that kind of goes from ear to ear right in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really cool start to this track. Yeah. The only problem I had was those those single drum hits were really a uh, little on the uh, overpowering side. Yeah, I was gonna. That was like the the two words I wrote down. <laughs> yeah. I only, my notes were kind of weak on this one, but like I wrote down bass and crash at the same time equals loud. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little overpowering, especially since there was so many cool, subtle things going on in the background during that. Yeah, kind of um, like those uh, those graduating, like mm-hmm. that sound. Yeah. Like, I like that. Yeah. yeah, but other than that, I mean, this this track was really a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, you know, it's a big difference from the the original, which was done on the YM twenty one fifty one, and uh, also used the Konami sampling chip, the what is it, KO fifty three twenty six zero, something something like that. Yeah, but. I thought this version was really well done otherwise. I mean, like, the game came out. It was a Konami game released in 1991. So they must have gone to, like, either bought a CD and just listened to it over and over or gone to the arcade and just listened to it. Now, we've heard composers say that they went to arcades and they would ask people if they could record them playing the games. So, right, um, right, right. I don't remember which composer that was, but I was like, oh, man, that's so amazing. Um, and it might have been, was that Kaja? No, no, no. Uh, maybe he did too. I remember he said he went over to his friend's house and they listened to the tape over oh, okay. and over. But I want to uh, say there was, was someone that said that they they would actually ask people. To, oh, you arcade. know what? It was Abo. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, I would like just go up to people and be like, hey, do you mind if I uh, tape this while you're playing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean that that would be pretty cool to to be able to ask like, how did you you know come up with this arrangement so quickly after this game was released? Yeah, it, it had to be that they released the uh, the soundtrack on on tape or something. Uh, 1991 was probably still tapes or mini <laughs> yeah. disc or something. Uh, but yeah, cool track. Uh, I thought it was. It was fun. It was. It's a little bit different. Do you want to hear a second of the original? Yeah. Just to kind of compare. Yeah, it's always great to hear because you can kind of hear the the touches and and it reminds you of the original track. But when you actually hear the original track, you can hear how different they actually are. Yeah. So this is uh this is uh, we'll just play like ten seconds or so. Yeah, you know, I, I think, I mean, the original, I think, is the best, but it was a cool way to hear it. I mean, mm-hmm. normally, uh, these, those kind of synthy organ tones, we didn't really get in the, in that arranged version. Right. It's still, I still think it was an excellent, an excellent job. But uh, anyways, I think uh, the, the important thing is, you know, these guys, they were all young, you know, mm-hmm. they were all like either high school students or just getting into college and they were just doing something kind of fun on the side, releasing these music discs. This one specifically was released on December 23rd of 1991. So right at the tail end, it was their right. last one uh, for the PC 8801. And uh, this was using the Soundboard 2 expansion or the YM2608 OPNA and used the PMD version 3.3. That's the professional music driver that we have referenced countless times mm-hmm. and we will continue to reference by kaja who we had on our whole chaser episode yeah yep yeah now uh, realizing that this came out just you know a few days before the end of 1991 it makes the subtitle of this disc make a little bit more sense with the last minute effort inflated edition so uh, yeah I, i'm sure there was like they just compiled all the tracks that they had that didn't make it into previous discs as well as and new the, music the, yeah and, and they just kind of shoveled kind of it like, out yeah we want to get this out this year um it's just a few days left so let's let's do it but um and and also to kind of touch on the kaja thing i think we're going to have to have him on again so we can not reference hole chaser as much <laughs> <laughs> well the music was great but the game was oh my god kind of yeah. a joke <laughs> um but yeah these guys they're just having a lot of fun doing this and uh, I was kind of looking through some of the notes in the disc, some of the different, they have, the way it's laid out is you you pop in the uh, the disc for the program, you pop in the, the PCM sample disc in disc two, and uh, you let everything load, you get the menu. Um, you can listen to the tracks individually, one by one, each one has kind of a little summary about it, uh, which is where we're getting the information that yeah. we're gonna be you know, kind of spitting out to you uh, throughout the episode. And then there's uh, there's one where you can choose songs individually, 
and there's also like um, things for information about the the members, you know, the different right. composers, the artists in this disc, uh, about the group, and also they review other discs, like other music discs, other Dojin, you know, collections and stuff. So uh, there's a lot of info in there, and yeah, yeah. So it's kind of fun to go through and kind of look look into the history. Like, I mean, 1990, it's not like you know a thousand years ago but it's yeah it, it might as well be it's like you know 20 some odd years ago now and right. so it just feels like kind of vintage at this point oh man yeah it's approaching 30 years ago <laughs> oh i know i know i know man uh, man it makes me feel old too yeah. you know <laughs> uh but yeah these guys they just they had a lot of fun doing it they uh there was um some references in the notes that they actually were friends from high school and yeah, that would they make just, sense they just kind of stuck together at least geppel and senior m uh, they knew each other for a long time. The other guys, they probably met, you know, through mutual friends or whatever. Yeah, or even it's other people that they come across in the Dojin scene because it seems like they they had their ear to the ground as to what other people were doing. Well, yeah, and they would all kind of gather at these pasoquets or comiquets. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where they would kind of mingle and do all this, you know, group activity. And they would introduce themselves to other groups. And it was just kind of like this huge community of fandom around the kind of indie scene right. in Japan at this time. But let's go ahead and get into another original. All right, so this next track is called Shooting Opening, which is original composed by Geppel. Uh, Shooting Opening, it doesn't really reference a specific game. It's kind of like your generic shooter. Right. So it was just going for like an opening theme that kind of captures that, that shooter spirit, I guess. Yeah. All right, so let's take a listen and we'll be right back. You just heard an original track from Geppel called Shooting Opening from GC Cluster's Music Disc Volume 7. I really like this oh, track. Yeah. I think it was a lot of fun. Now, it starts off a little subdued. It's got that like kind of twinkly, like you don't know what's going to happen. Something right. sinister is something sinister's cooking, you know? Right. And then it, you get that, that almost blast off feel. So mm-hmm. I, I get the shooter vibe right oh, away. Oh, yeah. I get the shooter vibe as well. Um, the samples, to me, sound a little bit muffled. Uh, it doesn't sound like they're very high quality, but that's not necessarily true. I think what it is, is it's, there's a lot of noise. Mm-hmm. Um, and this reminds me of kind of uh, like Toshiaki Sakoda's style, mm-hmm. where it's it's very there's very heavy distortion, and it right. creates this, like, it's almost like fog on top of the, the track. Mm-hmm. And then, like, every now and then, 
uh, you know, a certain instrument will emerge, but it retains this like this haze. Yeah, and, the, and it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, there's like a um, like an electricity to the right. whole thing. Like there's a little bit of a uh, almost like a buzzing that is kind of like makes you feel uncomfortable. Uh, I thought this track was very heavy and dark, and I really really enjoyed that. I thought the the opening part was really cool. How it you weren't quite sure what was going to happen, and then it just was like sinister like just dawns on you it's like, oh <laughs> yeah, my god this like is really satan spawn just emerges yeah. right now there was some parts in this track that uh, i i looked up to you and, and said that uh, uh it reminded me of like a sonic um like a sonic track where you're like you're i don't remember if it's like you're approaching robotnik or if it's like a little cutscene where think like it's where robotnik is flying in and yeah it's like that dun, 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 yeah dun, and it's like dun, 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 dun. yeah like, yeah do 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 like it reminds me of that and which isn't bad and i know that sonic was huge you know in the 90s so uh, i don't know if was sonic out yet in not one oh, maybe yeah maybe sonic one okay. yeah sonic yeah uh but uh I thought it was a very cool track. I really enjoyed how dark and heavy, and I really liked the real grunginess to this one as well. Yeah, I think that this track is uh, an excellent shooter, and it's it, this could have easily been in a game. Mm -hmm. Like, totally. I mean, these guys have some talent. Like, yeah. this really is... I, I think this is an excellent showcase of what we can learn and explore from like these music disc volumes for sure. Yeah, because I think it's one thing to be able to take and rearrange an existing track, but then to make a, an original track that's this cool and to be that young and push it towards a specific genre. It wasn't just like oh, it just happened to sound like a shooter game. It was like the goal was to make a shooter uh, shooter track and. I mean, like you said, would fit great in a game, especially towards the end of a game where you're coming up on the last couple bosses or the final boss or something like that. So, Or uh, even something with a wicked cutscene, mm -hmm. you know, that starts off kind of like the, I was just going to say like like Musha or something, you know, it has yeah. like that wicked intro, that anime intro mm -hmm. to it. Uh, I think that would fit perfect as well. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to bring up that the PC-88 that this was written on I, most of it was done on Geppel's personal machine uh, which was a PC 8801 MA which is the second model released to have a sound card upgrade and the soundboard as well included uh, the first one being the 8801 FA model and this was released in 1987 so I mean this is a very old right. machine uh, it's already four years old since the release of this, uh, five years old since right. the release of this this music disc, and they're still you know working on it. Yeah, and in computer world, that's ancient. That's ancient, but at this time, you know, s machines were moving a little bit slower. There was a lot of moving, uh, a lot emerging, but it was very incremental right. at this time. So I, I don't think it mattered too much. Now, in the notes, he does mention that he wanted to buy a 386. And uh, he, you know, he had a 286 VJ, which was like some Epson machine, I guess. Uh, he wanted to buy a 386 uh, to get a little bit better processor and stuff. And he was so excited about having a co-processor, uh, but because he was broke, he couldn't afford it. And so he continued using uh, his 286 and uh, doing everything on the 8801 MA instead of getting like a, you know, PC 98 and moving on stuff mm -hmm. like that as well. But uh, I think it's pretty cool that he at least made mention, like, hey, this is the machine that I worked on. Here's yeah. my specs. He even says, like, all the other equipment that he has, like, his MIDI device. He's got a Super Nintendo. He's got, like, um, just a few different, like, things in there, like certain keyboards, certain speakers. He's mm -hmm. got all his, 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 basically his config listed out. Yeah, and I think that's very cool, especially for, you know, a group of people that's so young to have it you know, documented as well as it is. And then, to me, that also speaks to... Uh, someone that's proud of what they're doing or is expecting other Dogen groups to listen to them and see, you know, how do their setups compare and stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. And, you know, I also think that was kind of big in the 90s. I remember when I was big into, I'm still in IRC all the time, but like, like there was like forums and stuff and BBSs and stuff and you would always have in your SIG, your signature, that, uh, you know, your computer specs and like mm -hmm. what you had and like, I remember that being a really big things like you know touting like the hardware that you had oh yeah i mean so. uh being on twitch that's all over everybody's bio you know, oh, that, most people oh it's have, still like, it's still still a thing yeah most no, people have hip, like dude. what processor and all the you know <laughs> all the way sometimes down to what type of keyboard and mouse and things like that so yeah all right so let's get into our next track we have a cover next i believe mm -hmm. what do we got next up we have a cover of battlefield which is the bonus stage music from space harrier on the arcade originally composed by hiroshi kawaguchi and arranged by kobohei
All right, that was Battlefield from Space Harrier in the Arcade, originally composed by Hiroshi Kawaguchi, and this time arranged by Kobuhei for GC Clusters Music Disc Volume 7. Super fun, like toe tapping, oh, exciting. Oh, so good. I mean, the music from Space Hair is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they they so far have picked some some really cool tracks to do covers of. And uh, this is so great and so synthy and clean. Um, uh, that Just that swing to it. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's so toe-tapping awesome. Yeah. You know? Uh, I, you know, I was listening. I was like, man, I, I remember the the original being good I, i've listened to it a million times mm-hmm. and i was like man this one is a lot heavier in the you know obviously the percussion line and uh, but otherwise it sounds you know it sounds pretty identical mm-hmm. and then i listened to the original yeah do you, you want to listen real quick yeah and i was like man there's a difference there's, there's a big difference. A difference yeah It's not. It's not as full. I, I mean, I guess I know the soundtrack so well, so it's always sounded like really, you know, rich and awesome. Right. Because it's got, it, you know, it's using the YM twenty two hundred three and Sega PCM. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always thought, oh man, this is so rich. But you hear it on the twenty six hundred eight, and it does sound just even though it's arrangement. You know, it does sound like extra heavy hitting. Yeah. You know? uh, to me, it was so funny because I was I was thinking like, uh, all right, like I knew it was going to sound different, and then. Like I knew, like just knew it. It was gonna sound different, but it sounded so different. It reminded, for some reason, it reminded me of the movie Twins. And <laughs> the original what? version is Danny DeVito, and uh, this this rearranged version by Kobo Hay is like the Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like, like they're they're twins. They're they they share the same DNA, but one is just got all the good stuff. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, and and it's really hard to tell unless you do a side by side. You know, I I know the soundtrack so well. When I heard this, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know this track. This is totally updated. Yeah. You know, kind of I guess enhanced percussion line. You know, but otherwise pretty much the same no mm-hmm. it's so different you yeah. know and so uh it was really cool to, to kind of hear those side by side i think oh yeah i love hearing the comparisons like that because you just can't tell until until you see you hear them right beside it, each it, other, it's so. it's hard anyways let's uh check out our next track this is another original composed by senior m and it's shooter first place name entry and uh we'll be right back You just heard Random Shooter, first place name entry, composed by Senior M for GC Clusters Music Disc Volume 7. This is uh, totally fun to listen to. Oh, it's yeah. almost comical. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense for a name entry, especially a first place name entry, yeah. that, uh, you know, it's very happy and bright, like you did it. All right, put in your initials, and, uh, you know, that's this is the best you've ever done. This is cool. So. <laughs> yeah. I I was kind of I was kind of laughing when I was listening because uh, going back to the the twins <laughs> and then like I was thinking so when I I was kind of researching for this episode we played that first track that Mayam Mayam mm-hmm. that you know Israeli folk dance I was watching and like they do this thing with their hands where they like, kind of move them back and forth and I was imagining you know Schwarzenegger and DeVito kind of doing that together to this song <laughs> and it was just like so like I couldn't help I was just bursting up laughing um, but in the notes. It's kind of funny too. He mentions that um, there was some dispute whether this sounds too close to Airbuster, mm-hmm. which is a 1990 Namco published arcade game by Kaneko, composed by Tatsuya Watanabe. And he says, you know, a lot of people said, oh, you know, it's really similar to Airbuster. It kind of has that sound. And he says, I don't mind it at all. It doesn't bother me. 
I'm strong. I'm taking my calcium pills every day. <laughs> like what? And then he even goes on to say like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. And then you know, just these guys are just having too much fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's cool. I think, uh, especially for something like this, it's not like he was actually in a game. So I don't think there's any, uh, any trouble to be yeah. too, a little too close. And I mean, we've seen tracks that have actually been published in games that have, uh, an eerie resemblance to something else. But, uh, I think this track was just super fun. Yeah, and the synth. I mean, it has a very '80s synth mm-hmm. kind of sound. I like yeah. it. And it, once again, this works perfectly for the idea of where it would be placed in a game. You know what this sounds like? It could be. It could be like the name entry screen for like a golf game or something. Yeah. Like almost like Neo something a Turf bit... Masters or something. You know, something that has that kind of awesome jazzy, right, poppy that, feel that, already. You know, like say that first shooter track that we played. This would be a little bit too bright and fun yeah. in juxtaposition to. You know the the actual level music, so yeah, I could see something that's a little bit less heavy in its tone of gameplay. So yep. Well, let's get into our next cover track. What do we got, James? So next up, we have a cover of Talisman Underground Dungeon from Cesarian on the PC eighty eight hundred one. Which uh, there was a lot of composers involved in that soundtrack, but this one was composed by Yuzo Koshiro and arranged by Geppel. <laughs> All right, that was a cover of Talisman Underground Dungeons from Sorcerian on the PC-8801 or the Sharp X1 Turbo. They came out on a bunch of different mm-hmm. systems, so it's hard to tell where they took the yeah. inspiration from, but it could have been any of them. It doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, yeah, that was, we believe, composed by Yuzo Koshiro, and it was arranged by Geppel for GC Cluster's Music Disc Volume 7. This track, I mean, there's just so many good things to say about it. I mean, it's it's so subtle and complex all at the same time. It has so many great little sections while the whole song feels like one cohesive song. Right. Uh, but there's just such great variety mixed in there. And it's just, I mean, it it definitely feels like the, uh, the original track helped allow it to be really complex and you know kind of like come across as very masterful you know i think that i like what the bass is doing and i think that's a, a compositional technique that koshiro's kind of he does a lot where it'll be like the bass will be in the background it'll be a little bit subtle and then it'll like during a break of the melody it'll kind of emerge so mm-hmm. that's where you get that that riff that's like and it'll just like pop out mm-hmm. and i i like that um that trait about um his style of music or um, you know whoever composed it, but it does it does sound that does sound very Koshiro right. to me, and I think that um, capturing it on the soundboard too, uh, he he did a really great job arranging this track. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, the the subtle complexity is something that reminds me of Koshiro as, as well. That uh, at first you know maybe at first listen you're like oh this track is something you know relatively simple it's it's kind of cool and catchy, but then there's so much to dive into, and as you listen to it more. It kind of peels away and you're just like, wow, that was really cool. Or that was, you know, mm-hmm. I almost didn't catch that. And that was what made that part so awesome. And um, so, I mean, this this track, it's like um, like an art student going to a museum and doing a copy of another painting. Like it may not be as good as that copy, but it's going to probably be one of the best things you've ever made. So. Yeah, it's still 
going to be awesome no matter what. Uh, anyways, let's get into our next track. This is another original, and this is kind of a unique one for this episode because it's uh, it's only using PSG. It's called mm. Three Voices Brings Me to Tears, composed by Geppel. just heard PSG three voices bring me to tears composed by Geppel now this track uh, I I really liked this a lot because uh, first of all it's so different Mm -hmm. than anything we've listened to before but at the same time it has you know a ton of complexity just in those those three voice channels and I think that it was composed very well it reminds me of almost like an early RPG or maybe like a kind of gives me a little bit of the nightmare series kind of feeling to it maybe maybe Fasanadu or something like that as mm-hmm. well I liked it oh yeah I thought this track was very cool um, I expected to see, hear something a little bit uh, like slower or more somber right um, it was a little upbeat yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I thought it was also very um, fun and surprisingly dynamic um, for just being PSG mm-hmm. when I was thinking about it like if in like a game sense it seems like it was a little bit more complex than what other games on just PSG only systems were you know, doing. Yeah, right. like say like the uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color or the Game Gear or something like that. It, it seemed like it was too complex for what would be allowed in a game. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I loved hearing what the the PSG by itself could do. I mean, that was very very cool. Right. You could see that. I mean, they, this PSG by itself can drive an entire song in a really good way. Right. I mean, there's not really any percussion. It's just just those those really strong kind of harmonizing minor chords just mm-hmm. kind of playing over each other over and over and i think that's kind of why it's like brings me to tears it's kind of like has a like a sad feeling to it even though it's you know it's really upbeat uh i i think that's kind of maybe what he was going for more of like a like desperation you know wandering through a forest mm-hmm. or something rather than you know just like this you know, I just lost the love of my life kind of, you know, feeling. Right. So. Well, and it is kind of hard with, uh, you know, like a system like the Neo Geo Pocket Color to get like something real dark and somber because everything seems to come out so bright and fun. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's, it's... Everything sounds happy is immediately yeah. coming out of the system. So, yeah. Uh, Geppel did uh, have a few notes in there. He said when he was listening to a tape of the X68000 game Algarna, uh, I guess he was kind of inspired and, mm-hmm. and he was like, I wonder how this would sound all done on, you know, just just PSG. And so he kind of used that as inspiration to make this track. Yeah. So And it's always great to see someone put uh, very strict limitations on what they can do compared to what was available to them at the time and see what comes out of those limitations which the song was a really neat track yeah i wonder what that tape looked like you know it was like like an actual cassette tape of an x68000 yeah, that's pretty cool yeah 1991 already at least cds were around by then man right? yeah <laughs> well i mean you see that some people they they hang that's around right. with uh and, and japan was very late to the cd thing they were more into the mini disc i uh-huh. think that that carried on a lot longer so maybe that's why well, my dad still uses DVDs and prefers full screen version <laughs> as opposed to widescreen. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, so let's get into our next track. This is another cover. It's called Kaze no Okurimono, or Gift of the Wind, from stage one of Detana Twin B in the arcade. And this was arranged by Tetsuya Otani.
And we're back. That was Gift of the Wind from Stage 1 of Daytona Twin B in the Arcade. And this was originally composed by Hidenori Maezawa, Masai Nakashima, Michiru Yamane, and others from the Konami Kukeha Club. And arranged by Tetsuya Otani. Yeah, so the first track we've heard from Otani on uh, this uh, music disc volume. Right. So it's very cool. Um, I haven't played a ton of Twin B, but this this track really reminds me of what I remember from the game. Well, you know the soundtrack probably yeah. better than the game. Yeah, yeah, and it just it felt very Twin B to me. Very fun, exciting. Um, you know, a lot of games get remembered for their you know title screens and stage one music. So right. I think that's that also helps make it feel very Twin B. Uh-huh. Um, but I just I just liked it. This maybe was a little bit more grand and had a little bit more uh, dynamic changes than I remember, but. I think that this track still captured the tone for what I remember. Of well, the do game. you want to listen to it? Oh, it's yeah. using it's using uh, what we mentioned earlier, the Konami um, uh, sampler chip and the YM2151. So let's take a quick listen from the arcade version. You know, I think I'm more familiar with the PC Engine version mm. of this game. It was released on everything, like Sharp X6000. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think that um, the arcade version, it, it's it's a good soundtrack, but I think that the um, everything is kind of overpowered and you lose a lot of the subtleties. This one still has a, a even more grand feel to it, you know, but... Like I said, you, you kind of lose some of the background right, noise right. That, that we actually heard a lot more clear in uh, in this cover. Oh, yeah. And the cover, that was one of the things that I did pick up on was that there was some really cool stuff going on in the background where that, you, that fr- mm-hmm. you know forefront melody was really nice and clean, but then there was some really subtle stuff going on back there. You can hear like the slides and stuff, very, very clean, very pronounced mm-hmm. versus in the original. Um, it, it's a great soundtrack, don't get me wrong, but... It, you, you kind of lose a little bit of that because th- they focus more on the the percussion, I think, in this in, mm-hmm. in the original arcade version. Yeah. Well, and it could also have to do with uh, that original track came out in the arcade, so everything had to be loud and in the front to be able to compete with everything else. And very true, this track could have, you know, this arrangement could have allowed for someone to be listening to the music without sound effects and other people walking around and stuff. So um, it it would be interesting to see, if, you know. If, if that were the case but uh, I, I really like this track the original like you said is great but it, it was awesome I mean yeah um, so let's move on to our next track next up we have an original from senior M called opening track from demon 2 
All right, that was the opening track from Demon 2, composed by Senor M. Wow, what, what an <laughs> awesome track. Wow, yeah, yeah. No, that, was, that was incredible. Yeah, that, in the beginning part, I mean, you could feel that something was going to happen. Like, that, like this, there was a lot to that really short beginning, but you could feel that, like, something was on the horizon that it was coming, and this track just explodes, and it's fast-paced, it's really wild, it's got this really cool percussion that's, you know, heavy, kind of filling up the background with that really high, like, uh, like you know, like, drawn out notes it was just really cool and right. i really love towards the end where the high notes get really high and really take over and i was yeah. like that was really cool yeah i like the call and response you got that uh that one fm channel that's just kind of like da 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 and then then like i it's either psg or just other fm just da 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 you know in mm-hmm. the background that's this is a great track now something about that so the game is demon 2 and we said this is original it's kind of out of place right mm-hmm. well I guess this was for an RPG his school club was doing. It was originally made for the PC-98. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, they were in high school, Yeah, these kids. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I want to do, like, a full RPG, da 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 But, I mean, they did this at, like, I think it was a culture club or something, like, cultural festival for the school or something. Mm-hmm. And um, I probably should read through the notes again to, to clarify. But he basically... Uh, you know, presented this, and and it was in their in their you know school club game, and uh, I mean, uh, there's stuff that we've heard on the show by like very experienced composers that doesn't even touch this man. Yeah, like this is really really good, and this is some high school guy. Yeah, you know, I'm, like I'm sure, like the game Demon Two is probably not good, and then this is just like what the heck? Like, yeah, this is so insane. And and you know, like again, it, at this time, everything had to be written in mml it, yeah. this wasn't like a tracker or something you know right. it wasn't just making like you know doing it all in the like, midi or this whatever a crazy skill this is incredible yeah and and like this this is my favorite track on this disc but i was just like <laughs> what you yeah. know and it i don't know it kind of made my jaw drop a little bit oh yeah very no. cool and there was um there was like a one of the samples one of the the, the things in the background the percussion it sounded almost it had an odd sound to it. It almost sounded like maybe it was being played in reverse, or like, like it felt like, um, it felt like the sound was backwards. Uh, like it felt like it was going up instead of down, or something. I don't know. It was, it was weird. There was like a really cool oddness to this track that I, that really kind of sucked me in right in the beginning. Huh. I have to go back and listen, uh, and I definitely will a few more times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So we got our final arranged track to play. This is from uh, a really well-known game called Raiden Densetsu which is the FM Towns version of Raiden. And uh, the track's called Galleon Tree, originally composed by Akira Sato and arranged by Pintaro for GC Cluster's Music Disc Volume 7. We just heard Galleon Tree from Raiden Densetsu, originally composed by Akira Sato, arranged by Pintaro. Yeah, this is, uh, well, I mean, Raiden Densetsu is uh, already an awesome soundtrack, so yeah. as long as it didn't really change much, it's still going to be excellent. Oh, yeah. Fun track. Yeah, I think this was a, a really nice cover of this track. I think it was very solid. There was no real major issues uh, like that first uh, cover that One, we heard yeah. where it had the, the drums were just a little too too prominent Pushy, yeah but, uh, 
Uh, I think this was a great track. And like you said, Raiden has just got some amazing music. Yeah. But I did notice, I don't know if it's just the tracks that, that were picked for this episode or if this disc in general has a shooter kind it of It does kind of have a more of a shooter. Now, yeah, because there's, um, that's right, there's some uh, tracks from Cotton on there and mm-hmm. stuff as well. Uh, there was a there was a track from Street Fighter Two, uh, but I I was driving me nuts, so I was like, <laughs> we got we can't put this one in. Well, um, I mean, it, shooters it good. shooters have amazing music in general, so I could see that, uh, especially in the arcade genre of a lot of these games, seem to be pulled from, and uh, they have a lot of energy too. Yeah. And I think you know these younger guys, they're all about you know just like moving a million miles an hour, and that's yeah. kind of maybe where it came from. Uh, yeah, excellent, excellent track, and I think we've had uh, just a, a lot of really good covers versus the original stuff yeah. today. It was a good mix. So yeah, I think the the covers were solid, and those originals were some of them were just so amazing. Yeah. All right, so today we covered GC Clusters Music Disc Volume Seven for our Pixelated Audio Music Disc Volume Three. Yep. Uh, for the PC eighty eight, also titled Wadu Agaki no Mizu Mashi Tokushu last minute effort inflated edition and it was composed by anima pintaro senior m kobuhe and tetsuya otani uh and the main composer the main guy of the group was geppel yeah if you want to know more about our show you can check us out online at pixelatedaudio.com for all of our show notes and track lists we can also be found on facebook instagram and twitter all at pixelated audio yeah and if you want to leave some comments on the website uh if you like this episode if you like what we're doing with the music disc volumes uh, kind of this little mini continuous series that we were doing. Uh, let us know your thoughts and any kind of feedback you want to give us is always awesome and appreciated. And if you want to help support the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash pixelated audio, uh, throw a few dollars our way. That's always uh, appreciated and helps support the show directly. want to give a shout out to some of our newest patrons. There is game cool and Christopher Andrews. So thank you guys very much for your support and uh, letting us know that you like the show. Yeah, it's always great. It's great to know that people are enjoying the show enough to you know, put some money towards it. Yeah, we're almost uh, totally, what, three years into it? Mm-hmm. Got a little bit more to go. Almost 100 episodes in. No, we've been doing it for three years, right? Yeah. Right, over three years. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, three where, years where, where's the time July. go? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Wow, man. I'm Now I'm, I'm just getting old. I've aged with this show. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I definitely have gotten quite a bit more gray hair since we started this show. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying it's directly related to the show, but the show has caused some of these gray hairs, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but like you said, we're, we're really approaching 100 episodes. We have a huge backlog. Um, We have some amazing recent episodes. If you haven't heard them, like our Cuphead episode, we can't believe we had Christopher Madigan on the show, the composer of Cuphead, as well as the current world record holder for the speedrun of the game, TMR. Um, There's also... That was fun. That was a fun episode. Oh, yeah. That was a a very fun episode. A lot of... uh, There's a lot of really great information that we learned from um, Christopher Madigan. Mm -hmm. Like he... Just every track, he had a ton of stuff to say about it and it was all really unique and to that particular track i like yeah. that yeah and then some of the other good ones we've had recently are yure kun which i actually was not on because i was unfortunately sick yeah um and then uh, we had a surprising uh, really fun obscure rpg called brain lord that was yeah. just a really good time yeah yeah uh do you want to bring up we we're giving a copy of cuphead away and the winner was cameron mount yeah. he actually posted on the site we did random number generator and he popped up so uh congrats on getting a, a free copy of cuphead hope you enjoy the game yeah uh l- you can listen to the episode again if you like and, yeah, and yeah. go yeah. with it yeah studio mdhr was you know, you know so gracious to give us copies to to hand out so yeah that, that was a really cool thing yeah uh we do have one final track taking out the show it's an original it's called doyo no yoru wa osawagi uh and that's kind of like the fuss about like what's the fuss about Saturday night? And I guess uh, <laughs> at these comic cats or passive cats, they uh, they're all talking about Saturday night. That's when they're going to do like their copy party and they're going to mm-hmm. you know copy each other's discs and do all this stuff. And like this track is kind of like a like a spoof on that. It's like what's what's the deal? <laughs> it's like a Seinfeld joke or something. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you back in a few weeks for the next episode. <laughs>